Welcome to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast, hosted by Makiba and Brittany, two former NFL cheerleaders discussing hot topics in the pro cheerleading industry and revealing the truth behind the palms. Today's episode is called Shut Up and Dance. Has anybody picked up on the theme yet that our episode titles are the titles of songs? It's only episode two, Makiba. Oh. Well, they're up there, all three of them, so they should be able to see. Um, But this episode, it's going to feel a little heavy, but we started this podcast because we realized that professional cheerleaders don't really have a voice. When you're on a squad, you don't really have the liberty to say what you think or feel about pretty much anything. (laughs) I mean, depending on your relationship with the you know, whoever's running your organization, you might feel like you can raise certain issues or concerns and a well-managed team will have that openness and dialogue. But for the most part, there's an unspoken code of silence that you just shut up and dance. You suck it up um, and you just don't speak up too much unless you want to find yourself off of the squad exactly there's a contradiction between wanting their professional cheerleaders to be smart and educated and great ambassadors for the team right but when it comes to speaking up for what you believe um, or what you think is right a lot of times people are getting cut from the team because of right them speaking up it might it it's happening it's in more places than one would like to think but for the women that are coming forward and suing their teams because of how they were been treated I think we're seeing the ramifications of doing that you're more than likely not going to make another team and as you can imagine they may have tried to speak up while they were on the squad and are no longer there so right this episode is just going to kind of talk about that dynamic and just how comfortable we felt at times. And we were a little nervous about starting this podcast even, right? Right. Because, you know, let's be real. If I were still on a team and came up with this wonderful idea, I probably would have thought twice about it because to the extent I was critical about our program or just talking about things that you just weren't expected to voice a concern about. Like you said, take it to the grave. No one would ever know this. That's why when we get together, you know, with other cheerleaders, it, that's it's our venting the main session. topic yeah. of, you know, our discussions because nobody else gets it like another cheerleader. And we're trying to kind of let other people know or make a community of other women who've experienced the same thing, laugh with us, cry with us. I know. And just kind of Because that's how, you form, the, that's how yeah. you form the friendships on the team, for sure, is just being able to sit with your girls. And when you have a really crappy practice or something happens that wasn't quite fair or just just a negative experience in general, you needed to be able to vent about it. And you probably didn't feel like speaking up to management was like – the possible. best thing to do no, or possible not. and knowing that it could impact your chances of making the team when it comes to re-auditioning every year it's just a very real concern so absolutely this is the truth behind the palms so we're going to give it to you raw uncut unfiltered cheerleaders unchained yes the original name <laughs> of the podcast <laughs> but before we get all too heavy into it we're gonna do a little cheer chat, yes, which is going to be like recent events within the industry, some cool things about sports. Basically, every episode will be a different topic. Um, but there's a song that you're really feeling right now, huh, Makiba? <laughs> You've played it so many times. You sent me memes about 50 times. I know. And so I go through this because, you know, there are certain songs that I wish like hell we could have danced to or just that just imagining what choreography I would do to it. But there's a song by Cardi B and Partisan, what the hell is his name? Partisan Fontaine, Fontaine, um, a rapper, but it's called Backing It Up. And it is just like the perfect crap talking song. song. It's your theme (laughs) song, honestly, because you're known with our group of friends as like the shit talker. I'm the ultimate shit talker. Yeah. And, back and it's it the way up. you flirt and, and all that good stuff, too. So <laughs> you've been feeling this song. I like it, too, though. It is hot. It's really good. There's a choreographer out there named Aaliyah Janelle. I believe she's out of L.A. that 
She kills it all the time. Every single time. Follow her on Instagram. I can't give her a shout out to her handle. We'll put it down below. But uh, she choreographed a piece of this song and is banging. It's just, ugh, I wish. Right. I wish. We took heels class together. We did. Yeah. Down oh, in man. Oakland. That was fun. Yes, with Aisha Francis, another queen. Yes. She started the original. this mess. She's yeah. the original. She taught OG. Beyonce all her moves. Exactly. She absolutely did. I don't think she takes enough credit for that. No, and people don't realize because they're, it's such a trend now to see people teaching heels classes and not really knowing who the originator was. But yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. That's and my then song. Listen the, to it and think yes. of Makiba. And then um, we've had some cheerleaders up in London. Which is crazy. I'm so jealous. I am jealous too. I noticed that not all teams are taking like, let's say, you know, Oakland played Seahawks, but only the Raiderette cheerleaders went. And I didn't understand why. And someone explained that whoever technically is hosting the team takes their cheerleaders. Right. And yeah, I mean, I was so jealous. They're they're just, just I know, they're just taking pictures and... They probably have a lot of downtime because a lot of it is just cultivating a relationship with the fans over there. And so there's probably a ton of appearances and then all of this, like, downtime to do all the sightseeing. London is awesome. I've it's, never been. You've never been. It's I only had so a layover cool. there after I got robbed in Italy. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Another episode as well. <laughs> wow, we have a lot right, of content. Yeah, we sure do. Oh, that ooh. would be. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. Yes. Give some ideas. Um, but yes. London is amazing. You wish you had more money to shop there. That's for sure. It's expensive. Super expensive. But why, do you even know why they went to London? Because why aren't they going to like Alaska or Hawaii? I know that there is. You know, obviously they do Pro Bowl sometimes in Hawaii right. now. But right. Like keep it kind of more local and the states NFL's, that don't you have know, big NFL. money. They want to capitalize on you know this these new pockets of of fans, um, especially probably with viewership somewhat down in the U.S. I think they realize between Mexico and the U.K. for whatever reason. So everything I've seen, Wembley Field or Stadium, whatever it's called over there, is packed with fans. And they're wearing, it's almost like um, the fans are wearing every jersey you can think of because they're just right. fans of the NFL. I see that. And they're so excited that we're there. So, so the fans are wearing a bunch of different uniforms and they're super excited that the NFL is in their country. So... That's Shout outs cool. to the girls who yeah. have a free vacation. Yeah, no, <laughs> eat me fish and chips. Seriously, crisps. but I'm sure they're working though. Like I'm sure they Absolutely. have their appearances. But have fun over there. It's and always fun to travel while being on the team. That seems like an extra treat. Didn't sure. you go to Mexico? Yeah, I went to Mexico because um, they actually rumored before the London thing. Because there is NFL Mexico. Oh, yeah. I don't so, know how many. There's supposed to be, I thought, a game played right. there. But I don't. That's what I, I thought. They've all went in London. I don't, I don't know. know. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on in Mexico. Maybe there they're is. just like, we're just going to go to London. Thanks. Right. Um, but, yeah, I bet it's a bunch of fun. Yeah. All right. That's it for Cheer Chat, right? We're just going to kind of get into the meat and potatoes of our discussion. Yes. What kind of sparked it for you, Makiba? Well, I saw an article about um, four or five cheerleaders from Georgia. This is Kennesaw State University. So these are college cheerleaders who will be professional cheerleaders one day, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, but they were, um, they decided to join the protest around police brutality and um, killings of black and brown people. And they decided to kneel during a college football game. And they were I guess the school's reaction was to ban them from the field during the national anthem, which caused a huge uproar and backlash. Um, I think it made the news. And so I think they reversed that decision. But ultimately, when the girls tried out again, oh, guess what happened, Brittany? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember this experience. Yes. It's happened to me. When not for d- the same reasons. Right. But yeah, they did not make it back on the team. Four out of five. I yeah. wonder why the one made it. I don't know. They claimed that they had, you know, based on all the publicity, that they had, you know, this huge upsurge in the number of people who are auditioning and that it was more competitive and blah, blah, blah. But the girl, one of the cheerleaders felt pretty strongly that it was tied to their protest. And so she sued um, the university in September um, just on the basis that she felt her constitutional rights were violated. And and she ultimately thinks that. And the sheriff. She sued the sheriff, too. Yeah, I don't know okay, what wow. was going on in this little town, but yeah, she she is, you know, going after the the university and 
I think it definitely made me think about, you know, when um, the movement that Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reed started with kneeling during games. And I just remember um, this was my second to the last year on the squad, I think, when it first started. But um, People feel very strongly about this topic. For sure. I know people who, like, refuse to watch football because of it. Yeah. Like, if he's on the field or involved or people are going to start kneeling across to other teams, they're not going to watch. Yeah. I'm just like, dang. Well, and I know people who refuse to watch because in support of Colin Kaepernick. So I think sometimes when they talk about, like, the viewership is way down, like, you have people who aren't watching for the – exact opposite reasons exactly. you know they're not watching because Colin Kaepernick's blackballed because he kneeled and then there are people who are watching or not watching because they're so disgusted with which is ridiculous the, yeah but I, I mean, remember when um I think the Seahawks were deciding how they were going to support the cause or what they were going to do as a team right. and that I remember was swirling around BMAC and so yes, our practice that night we, we were we were told it up. yeah we were told you know we go through the whole game um the Thursday before, you know, Sunday's game, and we kind of go through the whole entire pregame performance, including lining up for the anthem, and and uh, there was just a discussion around we're not going to, regardless of what the guys decide to do, that we were going to stand for the anthem and do what we normally do. But that's crazy, because we're the cheerleaders, obviously, and we're supposed to be supporting the guys, so don't you think that we should have supported their I, decision in I some have, way? I would have, I mean, I was not a fan, I will say, of what the guys did I thought it was a little it showed unity amongst our team but I I just wish it didn't make an impact like yeah Collins did. no I mean it would have they should have went there if they were gonna do if it. they were gonna yeah anything anything they that was it. my take but at the same time it was the team the team's own discussion and how they reached that you know decision together I I applaud that not everybody's going to be on the same page about to kneel or not kneel but to be able to do something that everybody universally agreed with well, I think not universally. I think there were a couple guys who still kneeled. Mm-hmm. Um, but either way, it would have been nice if us as the cheerleaders were able to align with what the guys decided to do just as a complete show of solidarity. Right. But Well, just was- in general, like the whole you know topic of this episode, Shut Up and Dance, should we be allowed to have external beliefs or you know things that we believe in that we can support and use our platform as right. being a professional cheerleader. You, one would think, right? I mean, there's definitely a cost associated with it. I think what we've seen with, you know, Colin Kaepernick, for an example, or just even in the NBA when, you know, some of the players started speaking up about, you know, the president and, you know, making comments about not wanting to go to the White House and people, you know, the ignorant reaction is shut up and dribble, I think was what, Who was it? It was either LeBron James or... I think it was James. Yeah, who was told to shut up and dribble. And so there's this perception that, you know... You're an empty shell in your head. Yeah. Like, there's nothing between your ears but just a sports person. I only want to see you entertain me, and that's it. And so, you know, I think there's been... You know, we've been towing that line a little bit. I'm glad that... Cheerleaders have always been in that. Yeah, shut up, and, shut up dance. and dance. I don't think it's ever been even like, what's so going on in your brain? You know, they yeah. think we're dumb even anyway, which is ridiculous. But I think it's um, the point of this episode and just this podcast in general is just because we do have things to say and we are intelligent. You know, we have experiences that are worthy of sharing and it should be a safe, it shouldn't be a shocker like that you want to talk and say something meaningful and here we go. Right. What would you say? Hair flip? Let's get Hair into flip. it. Hair flip. Let's get into it. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, if we're going to go there, right, we might as well yes. dig all the way in. But Yeah. It's not all negative, though. No. It's just a it's just They know us just this last season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the players kind of always have been able to. Mm-hmm. Is it a certain month? We should have done our research, honestly. Um, but whatever. I think it's in Wing November. It. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I think it's how you make it. Um the players are allowed to support like a cause okay. or foundation with their cleats, so they'll oh, change yeah, the colors. That. I yeah, change that. the colors or designs. And so last year, um, the seagulls were able to do that with their palms. And so you guys were able to decorate your yeah, palm palms. Yeah, we or? had to add a ribbon to the palm. Okay. To support, but that's the thing. It's kind of like you're given an inch, but you're not that like that's it because everything had to be approved. Oh, wow, really? So it wasn't like, go for it. I mean, nothing was turned down, but do you know what I mean? It was yeah. still kind of like, but what still are you going to do? What are you going to yeah. say? What are you going to say? What are you going to do? 
So mine was pretty safe. I just um, did a dog rescue. Oh, but because and fun. why did you do a dog rescue, Brittany? It was the same rescue that I got my puppy from. Well, okay. Forgotten Dogs okay. Rescue. Yeah, so well, that so was really fun. And that adds like some dimension to the it girls does. on the team, right? I mean, you, you guys probably got to hopefully promote on social media or something, and right? Kind of. But I think something like that is is wonderful. I mean, you're educating your fan base. I mean, you have your own set of followers as a professional cheerleader and. You're letting them know a little bit about yourself and what you care about, what you believe in. I think that's – there's nothing wrong with that. I think that right. was a nice compromise of, like, giving you something. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, dang, sometimes we weren't even allowed to just say, like, what we knew about football, for example. Oh, like, that's true. you know, told not to answer questions about football. I went on a radio show at the barbershop, and I remember there being, you know – Talking while points you were on the while team. I was on the team. Right. Yeah, I was a guest on the show, and you know, I was psyched to talk about football. I love football, and um, there was just a conversation around talking points, and and almost discouraged me from talking about football. But I was just like, Man, if they ask me a question, I'm going to answer the question. Like, I'm not going to sit there and act like I don't know what I'm looking at yeah, when I'm on the field. Yeah, your hair and your finger. Yeah, and like, just like <laughs> I no, don't know. I'm just a dancer. No, no. And so I'm, um, you know, I doubt they listened, but shoot, I. When I was on Here's that your show, heck yeah, they did you asked get me in trouble I, for anything you said. No, I mean, and did I sound like I knew I was talking about? Yeah. Yes, but it was fun because they asked, you know, who my favorite players were. I'm like, are you talking about offense or defense? Like, I, you know, they oh. asked me if I knew what I was watching when I was watching the game and how often, you know, you're looking at the game versus cheering. And I'm surprised I never got in trouble. Seriously, for watching the game, heck yeah, I would oh, hardly turn around. Oh, I was around. jumping around and acting like I was a fan yeah I mean, I mean I'm, that's the best seat in the yeah. house but I would hardly turn around to the fans well I for was defense kinda, for a little bit because there are fans all over right <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like cheering to the fans on the other side of the field but anyway it's there's a lot of restrictions on what we can and can't say or definitely this watchful eye like let me approve what you're going to say we were you know there were rules around what we could post and say um even on our social media about how we played you know, do you remember that? Yes, yeah. yeah. It was like, don't make any comments about, you know, let's just say it's the beginning of the season, any removal of players, the yeah. addition of players. Nothing. Don't make any comments about anything about football. And it's like so crazy because right. that's what we're there for. True. And support. they may have that. They may have that rule for, you know, the rest of the employees, too. Um, and you are supposed to be an ambassador to the organization. Maybe we're supposed to appear very neutral and. But sometimes it's like pretty face, like, you know, a princess in Disneyland that you play the part, but you really don't stray from the script too much. Right. Well, recently, this is sad, but our owner, Paul Allen, passed away. Yes. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. And I think we heard through the woodwork that they were not allowed to even make a comment about that. Which is Which is so sad because I personally have met him. And truly enjoyed meeting him. Right, right. So I couldn't imagine not being able to. But then you have your personal. That's something that our organization did is you mm-hmm. had your private. Well, you had your own private mm-hmm. social account, media accounts, social media yeah. accounts. And then you had the one that was for, you know, your time cheering. Right. And I guess there's a line between what should you use your your personal for to c- communicate how you feel about X, Y, and Z versus your actual Seagal account. And, you know, I don't know if you listen to Jamel Hill, but when she was on SportsCenter, she yeah. got a lot of heat for using her employer social media accounts to kind of voice her concerns, yeah, even though I thought I like that. that was the whole point of the stupid show. But <laughs> anyway, I mean, I think there's there's that line that's really blurry but um well but, specifically mm-hmm. oh go ahead oh no no you go oh, no you go no <laughs> you go thank you very much um but just the blurring of the lines is mm-hmm. kind of what we wanted to talk about a little bit too is Kristen and where she cheered for the Miami Dolphins right and the lines were definitely blurred between her personal life and her cheering life right but the part that was the most shocking was that during an interview for her to make it back onto the team, they wanted to bring up the fact that she was saving herself for marriage. Yeah, which it's not clear um, if she said that on her personal social media or if it was even social media at all, but they came down on her pretty tough around, like, they actually accused her of sexualizing 
the fact that she was saving herself for marriage. Like, I don't know if they thought that she was saying that so that she, guys would think she's hot. Or, I don't know what the right. heck they were going for with that. But to have something that personal brought up to you as we don't want you talking about that on social media. I think she was actually told that for sure. And she felt bullied, essentially, because of her faith and her exercising her faith. And she brought up in her lawsuit both in religious discrimination and um gender Gender, discrimination that like the guys talk about their faith all the time like if they're interviewed or they're talking about a game I mean they're shown praying after the games and you know in the little circle prayer circle whatever they call it but but she you know she was doing the same but probably even more removed because it was on her personal it was part of her personal life and here they're bringing it into her as a cheerleader and saying kind of like she had to choose between right And what a crazy thing to kind of like talk down to her about because like we're discussing this whole episode is being a role model and people looking up to you and Mm -hmm. and paying attention to what you're putting out there. Right. What a powerful thing to see somebody that's very religious and like what's what's wrong with that for the younger generations coming up? We actually need a little bit more of that if you ask me. Okay. We're definitely Uh, skewing on the other side of the spectrum. I mean, you have a gorgeous woman. I mean, this Christian's beautiful yeah. and um, very endearing. And, you know, the video that we watched from the Players' Tribune, um, she's just very well-spoken. She grew up in a military family, um, strong sense of self, I think. And she, you know, for, like you said, young girls to be able to see her and maybe look at her as an example of not feeling pressured because of your looks to give in to advances right. from you know, be an Instagram hoe or whatever what right. it be, you know, right. just this tone it down other, a little. Exactly. I think, and I mean, you know, I don't know, there's so many contradictions in our world, right? Because, you know, here she is advocating for saving yourself and, or maybe she wasn't really advocating, but this is her describing what she's choosing to do in her personal life. And people want to try to point out the contradiction of her, you know, dancing in the NFL and some sexy costume and like, like there's you can't do both like you have to pick or choose and I think you can be beautiful a virgin and an NFL cheerleader guys I mean yeah I think it's okay I mean do you remember girls would actually speak to that during auditions when we'd have like our one question that we had to answer I think there have been a few virgins oh yes yeah Yeah, I remember that I mean that's pretty shocking to me just because you want to yell from the rooftops about your faith but personally that's not my thing and Mm -hmm. um yeah I kept my answer really vague and just to the point well yeah because it's kind of how (laughs) well how personal do you want to go in that awkward moment before you start doing a dance in front of 10 people in a big camera (laughs) and a bra top and booty shorts exactly but exactly not like who cares but I don't see the relation right between her uniform what she's wearing no if she's in a bikini shoot what does that have to do with it right at all she's a virgin she should be able to freely talk about her decision and I don't think she was pushing the line of doing it on her social media as a Miami Dolphins cheerleader but to be attacked for it um is definitely unfortunate and she ended up quitting didn't she this is not this wasn't an issue of her quit yeah being fired for it but she felt like she was bullied while she was on the team and um a powerful thing that she said was that um they kind of told her that she was only special in the uniform uh, and so the thought of Mm -hmm. giving up the uniform and not being special anymore was you know upsetting then when she gave up her uniform when she quit that that was more powerful. Mm-hmm. I thought that was beautiful that she no, said she, that. No, I was really, really moved by her. I think, you know, if you watch the video, you will see that, you know, this woman's well-spoken, she's intelligent, and she should have been had the freedom to say what she wanted to say. And best of luck to her with her lawsuit. I think Absolutely. they have a hard time defending their actions in that. Right. It's really pretty pointed to her religion and employers cannot discriminate on the basis of religion right this kind of sparks some other lawsuits too and Mm -hmm. we were just talking about like uniforms and calendar shoots where you're wearing a swimsuit and this redskins article oh they They talked talked to to, the press yeah so they talked to the press a few girls um went to I, i don't know if they're approached because you know with all these lawsuits coming out i don't know if you were contacted but i was contacted by a news outlet but to Nobody see if wants I wanted to talk to, talk to me, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but they wanted to just see if I wanted to talk about my time as an NFL cheerleader. So I'm guessing these Redskins cheerleaders back in May decided to anonymously at first speak to the press and talk, told them about this incident where they 
were essentially doing a swimsuit shoot and uh, there were season ticket holders who were invited to come down and basically watch their photo shoot and some of the shoots were um, topless and they had to kind of form a human oh, shield yeah, around they the girls. Oh yeah, they do the like body painting. Yes. So it's like, it looks like you're wearing cut off shorts and a bra top, but it's actually paint. Yes. So you're standing out there stark naked. Pretty much. Okay. And they had quite the show. And then it went one step further where I believe the girls were asked in a way where they probably did not feel like they could say no to accompany the men later on that evening at a party that was off the little resort that they were on. Okay, so, so they, being escorts, that's pretty great. much. Um, nothing happened, but they definitely f- felt in the article they said they felt pimped out. Yeah. And uh, I would too. So these girls, they ended up, you know, speaking to the press about it, and it ends up getting blown up into this, you know, article. And um, you know, just around the concept of shut up and dance, I think it was really disappointing that. A lot of her current teammates, <laughs> you know, somewhat bullied these girls so the, and, like, accused them of lying, saying that they should turn in their team ring, um, oh, like you're dragging awful. the Redskins' name through the mud and how dare you, you know, bring shame to the organization. That was the reaction from from this sisterhood of, of girls. And uh, that's really disappointing. Yeah. I could definitely see see that happening though just certain personalities are like oh, yeah. tried true a drink in the cheerleader the kool-aid yeah. yeah which i mean i think i'll always have it in my heart but mm-hmm. to the point of not recognizing that another human is uncomfortable with a situation and right. it's the truth right so right. why are you trying to silence them exactly by bullying them into but that I love the girls' response though they were at first anonymous and then they came out and revealed their names like i'm not going to be Shut told up to shut and, up yeah. like I you know this is what I experienced come and at me bro yeah <laughs> we're not gonna take it anymore <laughs> but I think it's you know and I find that empowering right because you know we see this not just in like the professional cheerleading space right but you know you look at what's going on in the world today with the me too movement we saw the supreme court confirmation hearings and what happened when the to the women who came forward. I, I looked into that a little bit more. It was very disappointing. Mm-hmm. I don't try to watch the news very often because mm-hmm. it's pretty depressing. Pretty bad. Yeah. But um, this certain situation, I was appalled. Yeah. And um, and just the, what the when yeah. you act as a woman when you speak up um, for sexual harassment, sexual abuse, like you, there's always a stigma around the fact that you have spoken up. People aren't going to believe you. Um, they're going to speak poorly about you, attack your character, or reputation, et cetera. And I think, you know, in our world, the women who've come forward to hold their teams accountable for the way that they were treated, you know, you see them kind of going to the ringer. I can't see these girls. I mean, maybe they will have another opportunity on another team that involves moving and auditioning and, and taking that chance that you would actually make the team. But you know, what are the girls doing now? They're, they're not out there dancing. I'm sure that's what they love to do and wanted to do. And but they're now not. they're blacklisted. They can't, right? We're depressed now. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? <laughs> Welcome to our second episode. But no, isn't Christanne doing, like, some pretty cool things now? She is. Um, definitely check her out on Instagram. Her name is spelled with an A-N, so Christanne and where. Um, took me a little bit to find her. But um, she, I don't know if she was doing this when she was on the team, but she did Wisdom Wednesdays mm-hmm. for, like, the women on the team or something. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, it just seems like... She's just very powerful overall and um, is still doing things and has a blog about it and discusses her faith and the whole cheering So she found her voice. Yeah, she did. She found her voice for sure. And we found ours, right? I mean, hello. Yeah, we did. This is our podcast and, you know, it's a chance to celebrate as much as it is to critique and to hopefully, you know, just spur conversations that ultimately improve the program. We know the girls that are on the teams now – probably have a very limited ability to speak out. You're still happy to have that dang on spot, so you're probably not going to, you know. Speak up right now. Yeah. (laughs) Hold tight, ladies. (laughs) Right. Um, But we want it, you know, we want it to be a positive experience for everyone, right? And, you know, sometimes you have to find your way to work within the system, so to speak, to, to bring about change. And Sometimes it just takes a little bit of courage. So we ap- we applaud the girls that are standing up, speaking out, and hopefully they'll have another chance to dance. Absolutely. That sounds good.
Locker talk. We need locker talk. Yeah, let's lighten it up a little bit. Okay, okay locker talk. So as described before, locker talk is kind of more truth behind the palms. <laughs> yes. Kind of embarrassing stories, something to make us laugh. Um, the topic tonight is uniform mishaps. We had quite a few, Mikiva, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> what can go wrong with the uniform that's got uh, <laughs> lots so of bells, bells and, and whistles. whistles? It totally does. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, one thing was that we had a big old belt buckle that was made, but the little fake gemstones were held on hey, by those claws. Hey, were Swarovski oh, crystal. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. They I don't even know. Blingy rhinestones. Right. Yes. But the little claws that held in the gemstones could catch on your tights, and you only divvied out 10 tights basically For the per season, season and yeah. we have 10 home games, not to count appearances and other things where you need to be wearing these tights, right? Yes. So, the way to keep the belt buckle from snagging your tights was to cover it in foil. And I have a collection of photographs where I forgot <laughs> to take my foil off. And so I'm dancing like the Tin Man. What is me with reflective stuff? I put it on my face. I put it you on my have, belt. You like shiny, uh-huh. shiny little things. <laughs> no, so that was funny. Like, did you ever forget to take your foil off? I, I don't think I, t- I forgot to take my foil off. I've definitely had my share Wrapped of... Wrapped up like a baked chicken. <laughs> take your foil off, girls. <laughs> I've had my share of, like, runs in my tights, which literally drive me crazy. I mean, I know there were girls that would put on, like, two or three pairs of tights just to cover up another run or something. Just... Yeah. Um, well, a especially your if crotch. you're, like, you know, a white girl and maybe you forgot to spray tan... <laughs> And you just, like, tan up the top, you know, real yeah. quick. And then you get a rip in your tights, and your white see-through flesh is showing through oh, the no. tan tights. Like, oh. it's more of a strong mm. comparison, right? Yeah. Like, you can totally see the hole. Ew. I've gotten holes oh. in the crotch. And then, oh, kick line time. Perfect. Because it would always, yeah. Okay, yeah. That was never fun. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that comes to mind is uh, we were on 12 tour, and... You know, we have accessories to our uniforms. So one of them is uh, the tie that ties your front together. Um, sometimes it actually was closing your uniform top up to, because you, right. yeah. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. But uh, a mishap, obviously, is it popping open. But one of the girls forgot her uniform tie. This happens tie. a lot. People forgetting People their tie. People forget pieces so of their uniform. A, like what? Like a four-inch strip of navy yeah. material that you yeah. tie in a knot. Exactly. Right? Okay. So, yes, if you do not have that piece on, you look naked. It's yeah. all wrong. Incomplete uniform, you, just, you could get in trouble. Yeah, that's not a good look for pictures. You can't hide it. It's right in the center of your chest. So, um, Sunro, shout out to Sunny. Hey, Sunny. She uh, thought quick on the spot. We, were, we had just pulled up, I think, to the um, BC Lions Arena in Vancouver, and we she came up with like in five seconds, like cutting that somebody else's strip in half to create two ties. And man, oh man, like talk about the stress syndrome that we all have. I'm sure PTSD is just like those moments where it's like, where's my half? You know what I mean? Like seriously, it cre- <laughs> creates quite, it is a mishap because there's yes. photos and things that will document the moment. And like, it would get back to home base, and you would get in trouble. <laughs> like, why did you forget your tie? Exactly. Irresponsible person, you. Yeah. Um, but speaking of, like, pictures, like, there was a picture of a uniform mishap of um, that little fun skirt that we have oh, that's gosh. got all these. It's so cute. But, you know, it's got, like, a, a band of rhinestones at the bottom. And for whatever reason, there were a few games. I swear we were, like, cursed for a minute. But... When doing some of the dance routines, um, when you're like kicking your seat or like picking your heels up, a few girls kept getting their heel caught in their skirt and would pull their skirts down. (laughs) Well, because it has briefs built into it, right? So they're part of it. Yeah. So if you pull your skirt down, everything's like, it's (laughs) out, booty out. Tight booty. Yes. Tight booty. Well, well you, have you have your tights, tights on. on. Thank goodness. <laughs> Unless you have a hole in your crotch and then, you know, Lord knows what you're showing. But, yeah, that's I wish that's we could happened. tag some photos down below. But if you just probably look them up, <laughs> there are some girls laying on the ground looking like an injured animal because yes. they're trying to pull up their pull skirt. Their sk- because sometimes, you know, you could be doing the splits. You could be rolling around on the ground, like different things. I mean, I, mine got caught on. Luckily, it didn't pull my dang on clothes off. But Well, we're always told, pick up your feet, yeah, you know. And, and so you're trying to charge out there like a, <laughs> I don't know, runway model. And your heel just Catch snags your... the back and pulls it down. Yes. Speaking of, those dang boots, okay. You can oh, find gosh. them at spirit stores around it's the close nation. close to Halloween time. <laughs> yeah, so it's close you to sure Halloween. Can. 
They are these white, like plastic wannabe leather boots, right? Very much not leather. <laughs> not real leather. <laughs> like, not even pleather. They no, are, they they're were, costume boots. Yes. And they have a heel on them, right? And the heel was capped, but some girls' caps would fall off. And so we would be running to the back to go change. And then you'd hear, step pop, step pop, step pop, step pop, step pop, running down on the cement. And you're supposed to do turns in these yeah, on the I don't turf. Know how we like, did that. I could barely do a double turn in tennis shoes. So <laughs> I'm trying to think of the other. Or just the heel snapping off. You know, that Oh my gosh, because they're so cheap. Yes. Like the actual whole heel. Would just, just disintegrate. Just decide to, <laughs> to bend it. And then you're doing a kick line, like, on your toes. Yes. Because that's happened to one of the girls it's during the performance. So I don't know what it feels like. But not fun. The show must go on, so you better... You better not stop dancing. Yeah, you better shut hope up the dance. DJ shut doesn't... Up, no, shut up and dance. <laughs> <laughs> you better hope the DJ doesn't play too many songs before halftime oh so you can gosh. go change your boot. It's so... And hopefully you packed an extra pair. Exactly. Oh my gosh, you just jack somebody in the locker room if you don't. Well, they're such bad quality. Like one time my boots turned pink. Like there was pink blotches all over them. And I'm like, what is this from? I had no idea. So I had to buy another pair on Amazon. You can also find them on Amazon. (laughs) Get the white PU leather. I don't know. They're so bad. It seems like they've updated their boots. Everybody loves like. They love those white boots, though. Yeah, they actually look really good. I think they give they you do. a little height. They make you look thinner. Yeah, but Why dancing never? in them in Not all so kinds of weather, snow, rain. It Trying was to clean them was the worst, though. It was. Ugh. Yeah, they're not easy to because they had to be brand new white every game. You couldn't have scuffs and you know dirt on them from the game prior <laughs> so we'd be all sitting on the floor with our nail polish remover and that's Q-tips. what clean them yes that's what clean them. oh my gosh what other ones i think that's ew well spray i don't tan. i don't have this problem because you were supposed to try a spray tan i had promised Brittany that i would try to see before because all the benefits and perks that we get with our sponsors i barely was able to use any of them because I'm black, but um, <laughs> but spray tan being one of them, and you know, we have I a remember, white uniform. Yeah, I remember going with you to um, get, see the whole spray tanning stuff and live, and I was shocked that it only took a few minutes. But you know, seeing you stand there and turn around with your arms <laughs> up was freaking hilarious to me. But you were you wanted me to try it one day just to see. Yeah, just why go did you spray want me tan? To, <laughs> I don't know. I just be funny. <laughs> just to use my perk before I left. Yeah, never did it, but. That stuff gets everywhere. I couldn't even imagine. Right. You're dancing around, you're sweating. And if you didn't time it just right and, like, washed off the excess tan, like, girls will know what I'm talking about. And some guys spray tan, too. That's totally fine. Um, okay. They do. It. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. Do you see them in the spray tanning? Yeah, they, they're oh, guys. They go? Guys go to tan a lot. I did not know that. Yeah, there's a lot of benefits to tanning. <laughs> but the spray tan is for color only. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, you're trying okay. to get some... I just spray tan. I'm changing colors before your eyes, aren't I? But yeah, just gross like tan lines. And sometimes it would react weird to like with your deodorant. So the stain would be green. Sometimes it'd be brown. Oh. So yeah, unfortunately it'd be like halftime like, uniform. oh my gosh, that girl has brown pits. We talk about pits a lot on this. Pits are fun. Pits are fun. <laughs> yes. Ew, but getting it in your uniform, would it even come out? Though? It would wash out. It would but wash I'm just out. saying, okay. like, if... But it looks like you... Does it look like you crapped your pants kind of thing sometimes? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess, yeah. Orange. orange? It's kind of orange. But okay. we had white pants, too. Yeah. Those were the sexy pants. Yeah. I you like love, them. I, I didn't do, like them. I, I like the them. navy pants better. I More hated slimming. those. Oh, they were so long and just boring. I mean, I no offense, down. but yeah, I didn't, I didn't love those. They sparkled. Were, yeah, but the white ones were sporty. We look like sporty, sexy soccer moms <laughs> with, our, with our rain jacket on and our hats. Anyway, that's our uniform Miss Happy Locker Talk. Yes. Okay, what's next week? Next week's episode is... <laughs> Boys Just Want to Have Fun. Yes. Now do you get the theme with the uh, song titles? But no, we wanted to talk about male cheerleaders in the NFL. There are three of them, and they are dancing alongside the cheerleaders Minus the pom-poms, but they um, made history this year by showing up at auditions. So we're going to talk about the three guys and hear about what their season's looking like and how they made the team. Yeah, it's awesome. It's it's worthy to note, though, that the Ravens, yes, someone commented on our Instagram, Pro Cheer 
podcast. Pro cheerleading? Pro cheerleading podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new to this. Um, someone commented on that photo that I posted that the Ravens have had cheerleaders for a long time. But there's a big difference, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so the male cheerleaders are, um, for the Ravens, um, are similar to a college squad that's co-ed where they stunt with the girls, throw them in the air, catch their legs, catch they're their They're not butt. doing double turns they're not, or, like, doing They're the not routine. doing the so actual routine. It's di- it is different. And so... They're like, awesome, too. But yeah, this is, go like, Ravens brand guys. New. They're actually in their picture, their squad picture. They probably were like, we're not getting any attention for... Uh, right. Because I don't... I mean, not that they're not part of the team, but when I cheered at Georgetown, we had a co-ed team, and the they guys were, were... I mean, we had to beg the guys to even do it in the first place, but um, they were just, like, in the background, like, afterthought. I mean, they would yeah. be part of the pictures, but they wouldn't, like, get out of the way. Right. Actually, I did make up one <laughs> routine where I had the guys dance with us. I thought it was oh, super cute. Cool. It was, like, I won't tell my age, but... It was like some when I dip, you dip, we dip song. Oh, awesome! And because when you, you know, when you're stunting, you have to dip and throw. You got lifted up. So I hated that crap. So I actually tried to tumble as much as possible. Like I could flip just rolling on the ground. I would do <laughs> round off back <laughs> handsprings until. Of this. I, oh my Does gosh! Your mom have some recordings. I would flip on the floor as often as I could because I hated stunting because I could do everything right and still face plant on the ground. Yeah, that's scary. No I don't thanks. know how girls do that. See, Mm-mm. that's like a whole nother world. Like we're right. cheerleaders. But we're mostly dancers. So right. that's the difference between the Ravens male cheerleaders exactly. and the Rams and the Saints yep. new male cheerleaders. So yeah. I just wanted to make a note of that. Um, Thank but you we for love your the comment. interaction. Yes, yeah, definitely absolutely. hit us up. But thanks for joining. This See you week. next week. See you next, next Wednesday. Week. Yes. Thanks for listening to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. Please subscribe, leave a comment, or review. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all at Pro Cheerleading Podcast, and also on Twitter at Pro Cheer Podcast. This is Brittany and Makiba. Until next time, keep your eyes on the sidelines.